Hello everyone, good morning. My name is Renata and welcome to Manifestation 101. Have you ever imagined being a superhero? Well, perhaps not a superhero, but think about a perfect person, you know? Someone who achieves all of their goals, someone who has everything they want, someone who fulfills all of their dreams. Now, I want you to think of that person, but this time, think of them as yourself. Do you want to learn how to become this version of yourself? Yes or no? Yeah, great, because I'm gonna teach you how. So, success and other cases of happiness are rare and are often seen as unreachable goals. But why is that? Why do we see happiness and success as such an uh, unobtainable reality? Well, this happens because we're thought that this is rare because we don't think we're enough for this kind of thing. When we're kids, we absorb information like sponges. So all of those thoughts of negativity, pessimism, and all of those signs they tell us that we are not enough for something, that we cannot do something, they get engraved in our brains, like water to a sponge. So we think, and we live all of our lives, since we're kids, which is so sad, thinking that we are not enough, thinking that we cannot do things, thinking that Maybe happiness is not something that everyone can have. And that, I think, is awful. But let me tell you a story. So last August, I had the chance to go to a concert with a friend. But I didn't have the money to go to the same zone as her. So despite this, I continued to think posit positively. And I thought, well, maybe somehow I can get the money. Maybe somehow I will get the money. So we continued to dream about it, and we talked about it all day. We were unsufferable. So we were all day like, oh my god, let's go together to this concert. And uh, we were so happy that we were going together. And I even dreamt about it a couple of times. But the day of the sale came, and I didn't have the money. So we had been dreaming about it, but we had settled for going to different zones. But something funny happened. She happened to buy tickets in the same zone as me, just a few rows away from me. And I don't think this is a coincidence. So basically, psychology says that what you focus on is what you manifest into our lives. Our brains will constantly seek for evidence to support our desires. This is why it's so important and why everyone tells us that it's so important to think positively. But also, it's a little bit contradictory because they tell us that to have expectatives on things is disappointment. They tell us that if we think something can be and then it doesn't, we're gonna be disappointed. So they tell us don't expect anything because if you expect, you will be disappointed. And that is an awful mindset. And that is why we are all miserable. That is why we don't long for something. We don't dream for things because we are told we shouldn't. We are told that if we do, we are going to get disappointed. Well, I don't think this is true. I don't think this is why or how we, could, we should see life. So think of a lemon. Does your mouth start to salivate somehow? Think of a bag of chips with hot sauce. Does your mouth start to salivate? Or has that happened to anyone when you think of a lemon? Yeah. I know. So this is because our brains and our neurons create the same neural pathways when we think of something that when we actually have it. This is amazing. So I, uh, do a little exercise with me, OK? Think of the beach. Think of being on the beach, on the waves. Think of having a mojito on you. Uh, think of being happy in the beach. We all like the beach, right? So think of it. Do you feel relaxed? Don't you feel like, ah, I'm in the beach? Yeah. This is because our brains think we're in the beach, even if we're not. This isn't about a beach, and this isn't about a lemon. This is about our goals. If we think that our goals are obtainable, they will be. If we think we're enough, we will be. I did a little research, and I came across this study. It was done by Harvard psychologist Ellen Langer, and it's called the Counterclockwise Study. So Ellen, reunited a group of men in their late 60s and 70s. And she put them in a space um, made to look like they were in the 50s. So as they were 20, right? And 60s, so. 
uh, the decor, the furniture, the music was made to look like the 60s. And they were not allowed to look into mirrors, but only pictures of themselves when they were younger. And this went for about a couple weeks, almost a month. And when the study ended, she did research on, this, on these people, and she found out that their bones were stronger, their vision had improved, and they looked noticeably younger. She also conducted another study that is my favorite of hers, and it's called the chambersmaids. Does anyone know what a chambersmaid is? No? Okay, well, chambersmaids are the people who clean in the hotels and in houses. So, you know, they're carrying their carts all along the hotel, and they're climbing upstairs, and they're running all day, and they're doing this all day, and they're sweeping, and that is exercise, right? That is exercising in some kind of way. So Ellen asked these women, do you do exercise? And they all said no, because they thought that exercise was what you did after work. They thought that exercise was going to the gym. They thought that exercise was lifting weights, or they thought exercise was running. But actually, it isn't. <laughs> it isn't just that. So she told half of these women that their work was exercise, that they were exercising while they were working. And she didn't tell the other woman that. So she looked. The, she took a closer look on them for a couple of weeks. And after the study ended, she found out that the women who thought they were doing exercise while they were working had lost weight, had went down a couple of sizes, had lost body fat, and were now more resistant to cardio. Why do I think this is so important? Well, it's because we all have the power to be extraordinary. Our mind and our body are often seen as separate units. We think that the mind wants something and the body wants something else. That is something that we commonly say. But this is not true. The mind and the body are the same, and we have the power over them. We have the power over our own brains, and we can tell it what we want to be, what we are, and who we want to become. So if we just change all of that that they told us as kids, if we change that focus, if we change that perspective, if we told ourselves that we were enough, that we are capable of doing everything we want, we would be. I assure you we would. This uh, example of the lemon wasn't just for fun. It was because mental imagery is also used as a technique of manifestation, and it's called visualization. So I would like for all of you to do a little exercise with me. Uh, we're going to do a little meditation. So if you all could close your eyes for a minute and don't open them until I tell you to do so, okay? So we're going to close our eyes and you're going to breathe in with me. I'm going to guide you through this, okay? So we're going to breathe in. Breathe in, then hold it, and then breathe out. Feel yourself sinking in the chair. Continue to breathe in, to hold it, and then breathe out again. All of those thoughts that you're having right now, send them away for a minute. Right now we're focused on this. So I want you to breathe in with me again. Hold it, and then breathe out. Okay, don't open your eyes, but listen to me. Have you ever seen that Harry Potter movie where they sit in front of a mirror and they see themselves as who they want to become? You know, when Ron sees himself with the Quidditch cup, and Harry sees himself with his parents. Well, I want you to do that, but with yourselves. So with your eyes closed, still breathing and relaxed, picture yourself in a mirror. But yourself, I mean the person who you want to become, the person who achieves their goals. I want you to see yourself, but as someone who has everything they want. If you want better grades, see yourself holding an exam that has a 10 on it. If you want money, then maybe see yourself with the money and a new car, maybe. If you want to be happier, see yourself as someone happier. Now, hold out your hand to that person that is in front of you and feel it become yourself. And send away all of those thoughts. Send away all those things that they told you about how you cannot be that person, about how you are not enough. Send them away and say thank you to yourself because I didn't do anything. You have the power in you already. You all have the power in you to be extraordinary if you let yourselves be. Thank you so much for listening to me. You can now open your eyes. Thank you so much for your attention. And as they say, fake it till you make it. Thank you very much. <laughs>